August 6, 1945. I was standing against the window looking outside. August 6, 1945. I was eight months old baby and this is the dress I was wearing that day. A day earlier, at a military base on Tinian Island in the Pacific, the world's first combat atomic bomb is brought out on the tarmac in preparation for delivery. The weapon's code name is Little Boy. Its conception is the most covert operation ever undertaken by the U.S. military. Some say it holds the power of the sun, the stars, the cosmos. But to the crew, the bomb looks like something much less cosmic. Little boy was 10 feet long, weighing more than the biggest pickup truck you can buy. Morris Jepson is one of 12 Enola Gay crew members whose mission is to drop Little Boy on a yet-to-be-identified Japanese city. At 2.45 a.m., almost 12 hours after loading the four-and-a-half-ton cargo, the mission officially begins. The Enola Gay takes off and heads west toward Japan. The first time I saw Little Boy was when I climbed into the bomb bay. Within this cylinder of armored steel is 140 pounds of highly enriched uranium. Its uranium is divided into a projectile and a target. The bomb works like a big gun. Bags of gunpowder ignite creating the pressure to send the projectile flying forward, smashing it into the target. Within seconds, critical mass creates a nuclear chain reaction, releasing a colossal amount of destructive energy. But because B-29s are known to crash on takeoff, the gunpowder is not yet inside the bomb. Now that they're safely off the ground, Jepson and Captain Deke Parsons can put the explosives into place. It takes Parsons only 15 minutes to place the four bags of cordite gunpowder inside the bomb's tail. But Little Boy's detonation system is not yet fully armed. How did you do it, Lieutenant? That's Morris Jepson's job. These are the actual plugs he used that day to arm the little boy bomb. The weapon has three green plugs that work like a safety lock on a gun, preventing it from activating. Jepson must remove the green plugs and swap them out. The red plugs complete the weapon's electrical circuitry so that sparks can ignite the gunpowder. I had to handle, touch, lean on the little boy bomb, so the last person to have his hands on that weapon was me. With the last red plug in place, the bomb is now alive. There are less than two hours before they reach Japan, yet no one's completely sure that little boy will actually work. The Hiroshima bomb was an experimental weapon, and it was the first test. Three Japanese cities had been chosen as potential targets for the attack. The primary is the port city of Hiroshima, located on the delta of the Ota River. A city of considerable military importance, it houses a communication center and an assembly area for troops. But it's far from just a military target. 80% of the people here 
are civilians. Since the previous March of 1945, almost every major city in Japan has been firebombed. Yet Hiroshima remains untouched. The people of the city worried about that. Were they being chosen for something especially terrible? But as the Enola Gay reaches Japan, Hiroshima's fate is still not final. It all depends on the weather. One of the requirements for the target is that it has to be visible from the air. Weather planes fly ahead to check the conditions over the three selected cities. As it happens, it is a clear morning at Hiroshima. The city's fate is now sealed. Thirteen-year-old Shigeko Sosamori can feel the sun burning down on her on this hot, cloudless morning. She runs to join schoolmates in their assignment to clear the streets for fire breaks in case of attack. I look up the sky. I saw the beautiful silver airplane and the white long tail and the blue sky. It looks beautiful. And at the same time, I saw something drop. Shigeko is less than a mile from the Enola Gay's target, the distinctive T-shaped Ioi Bridge. Running across the river in the center of downtown, it can be spotted easily, even at 32,000 feet. 90 seconds before release, the bombardier sets his sights on the target about two miles below and makes careful, last-minute maneuvers. Will they hit the target? And will it explode at the preset altitude of 1,900 feet over the city? There are hydraulic actuated doors, big long doors, 12, 15 feet long. They don't just slowly open, they fly open like that. Jepson and fellow crew members had done the math and expect the bomb to detonate at 42 seconds. At 43 seconds, I was nervous. I was monitoring the test box, thinking and counting in my head. The crew of the Enola Gay are not the only ones counting down at 8.15 on August 6th. Eight-year-old Takashi Tanemori left home at 8 a.m. to get to his school. He's looking forward to playing with his friends. I was excited this particular morning for the hide-and-seek because I was chosen as it. So I was standing against the window looking outside. While Takashi counts, thousands of others are outside en route to work and school. As the lone Enola Gay flies overhead, there's little alarm. It looks nothing like the bombing squadron most people fear. People assumed it was a weather plane. And instead of doing what the scientists had assumed would happen, which is that they would run into bomb shelters and be safe from the effects of the blast, People came outdoors to look. All of a sudden, bam! Flash in the sky. Pure white. I saw the bones on my fingers as though I was looking at x-ray. So intense. This is the only footage ever taken of this atomic explosion. Scant documentation of an event that changes the course of history. Within moments, the mushroom cloud is 10 miles high. It spreads three miles over the city 
and its more than 350,000 inhabitants. On the day of the attack, the United States has been in the war for four years and has lost over 100,000 men on the Pacific front alone. Despite losing over a million men, the Japanese continue to fight fiercely. Some fear that if the war goes on, millions more will be lost on both sides. We thus saw the atomic bomb as a potential way to shock them into surrendering. This radically new bomb reduces the living, breathing downtown of Hiroshima to a wasteland. 70,000 human beings are dead instantly. Another 70,000 injured. It's the highest death toll ever caused by a single weapon. Yet Japan continues to fight. Three days later, on August 9th, the United States drops a second atomic bomb. This time on the city of Nagasaki. Another 40,000 die. Japan formally surrenders three weeks later. The world's bloodiest war is finally over. The Americans, when they think about Hiroshima, for them the narrative stops as the mushroom cloud erupts and the Enola Gabe comes back home. And for the Japanese, that's exactly the moment at which the narrative begins. Just weeks after Japan's surrender, President Truman orders a report on the physical and medical damage inflicted by this new weapon. Hundreds of scientists, engineers, and military personnel are recruited for the job. Alongside occupation forces, special investigative teams arrive in Hiroshima. Working with Japanese scientists, they'll spend 10 weeks amidst the ruins gathering intelligence. To comprehend the bomb's devastating power, the analysts break down the three major effects of the atomic explosion. Upon detonation, an explosion of energy is released into a small volume of air. This creates a searing white-hot fireball that flashes hotter than the surface of the sun. Gamma rays and neutrons from the breakup of uranium shoot outward as deadly, invisible radiation. As the fireball stops expanding, a wall of pressure, or blast wave, races out at more than 700 miles per hour. In their report, 